All right, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite use cases for Golang. The, basically the way that I use Golang like the most on a day-to-day -day basis and that is Lambdas. Now if you don't know what Lambdas are, they are a serverless microservice other buzzword function through AWS that allows you to basically modularize your code and run serverless functions, um, which are basically functions that run um, in a way that is not directly tied to a VPS or any other kind of server. Um, so where you would normally have a function or a script run on a VPS through DigitalOcean, AWS, or on your own local PC, a serverless function is not necessarily tied to any sort of infrastructure. AWS basically has like a, a handler that runs functions according to different triggers. Um, we're not going to talk about like a lot of the intricacies behind AWS Lambdas. We're just going to show how to set them up on AWS and we'll go into some of the like specifics later on. So I've already written this code out um, mainly because I already released a blog on this subject. If you want to read over the blog, I'll leave a link in the description for the video. Um, and you can read it over there, but let's do a quick walkthrough of the code. Let's ignore this comment right here at the top and let's walk through the way the function works. Um, so there are probably better ways to do this. The way that I typically do it is I will have a main function and then that main function's purpose is essentially either to set things up or to go ahead and start up the main Lambda function. Um, this main Lambda function right here, basically the purpose of it is going to be to print a specific message and to return a timestamp. So that timestamp is just going to be the epoch um, timestamp. Um, it's going to take an input. Um, this input is going to be automatically parsed into a specific structure that we've defined here. Um, so when we test the Lambda itself on AWS, you'll see that you know, we can only pass it in you know, in this type of JSON structure. So it's going to parse this out of JSON and into our struct. It's going to calculate the timestamp. It's going to print that timestamp out, print the ID and the input message, um, and then it's going to return the timestamp itself. Um, so I've already deployed it. We're going to kind of skip forward a little bit. I've deployed it here on AWS, um, and I've already created a test blob, right? Well, I guess I haven't. I was supposed to. Um, so let's go ahead and create the test blob here. We are using message and ID. So message, like, and subscribe. Then ID 69420. So let's go ahead and test this out, make sure that it actually works correctly. Hopefully it will. So we've got our timestamp here. And if we can look in the logs, it's not printed properly but it does show our timestamp, our ID, and our message. Um, so it is technically working correctly. Now let's walk through the laziest possible way you could do DevOps on here. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit. So if you check out this comment right here, this is basically how I do all of my Golang functions. Um, I set up what is essentially a one-liner script that is going to build it, zip it up, which is what AWS requires, unfortunately, and deploy it. Um, so we can see right here, we are building it out to main.exe. We are building um, with go build. We're setting the operating system, the target operating system in these environment variables. So go OS and go Arch. Um, we are using Linux and AMD64. Those need to match your configuration on AWS. Um, so, see it should show it down here so we've got our architecture here um, and i think it's just linux by default i'm not entirely sure where that's set but i think it by default runs on linux um, so we're setting up our operating system and our architecture here and we are building out to dot slash um, temp main um, so if you look right here we've got our main.exe that's what we're creating in this first part right here then we are going to zip it now on Linux and Mac OS, you can do this with a normal command line, like zip command. Um, with Windows, because it's a shit operating system, you have to download and install 7-zip and throw 7-zip into your path. So if you're following along at home, that is how you're going to have to do that. Um, so basically we're zipping up the main.exe into a main.zip. Now this is the part where things get a little bit complicated. 
you're going to have to set up the AWS CLI on your own. Um, that's where you're going to put in all of your secrets, your username, and you know, essentially authenticate to AWS. Once you've done that, all of that authentication information is stored in a specific area on your PC. Um, so you wanna make sure that A, that is somehow protected, and B, um, you never show that to anybody. So when I run this command, it's not going to actually show you anything particularly interesting. Um, so I'm using the AWS CLI. I'm going to run this on the Lambda service, and I'm telling it, hey, I want to update a function's code right there. So you're gonna to have to create this function via the GUI or via the CLI. I usually do it via the GUI. Um, and you're going to need to remember the name, obviously. Function dash name, I'm using test function for blog. That needs to match this right here. Um, so make sure that your names match. And I'm specifying a region because I'm using a non-default region because I didn't want to show you all of the other lambdas that I've been developing. And you are specifying the zip file right here. So this is telling it, hey, we want to upload this zip. Now what is happening behind the scenes is this zip file is being uploaded to S3 and then the Lambda function is going to pull from that zip file. Um, so that's, that's essentially how everything works behind the scenes. So if we go ahead and run this, let's hope this actually works because it's a pain in the ass to debug it. All right, so we zipped everything up properly. I think it's going through the upload there. All right, if you get a giant, um, a giant JSON blob, that's what you're looking for here, quit. And the best way to make sure that this did actually um, update, refresh it, and you should see last modified 16 seconds ago. We can go ahead and run the test again. Uh, let's hope it did not save our test. So let's do message like and subscribe. ID 69420. Let's run that test and we get success and it's all good. Okay, so really, I mean, on its, at its base, that's it. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of other things that we're going to end up covering later on. Um, but functionally, because Golang parses things the way that it does and because the Lambda library is actually pretty good for Golang, um, the most simple version of a Golang Lambda is pretty simple. Um, you know, when you're setting up these lambdas, you've got to make sure to pick the right runtime, obviously. Runtime is going to be go1.x, um, and you have to change the handler. Um, so make sure you change the handler over to main or whatever your main um, function handler is. I changed mine to main because I want to run main first. Um, so really, yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, there's not too much else to cover on its base, but I'm going to be uploading some more, like, I guess complex iterations of how to do Golang Lambdas later on because they're just super powerful. Um, but yeah, if you liked it, like it, take it easy, peace.